Yo guys, what's up? Today I'm gonna to be watching another demo of mine. You guys seem to really like the other demo videos that I did. This video is gonna be a little bit different because in those other games, I showed how to play really well and how to counter people, uh, how to counter low-skilled players, how to play well against high-skilled players, right? But in this game, I'm kind of playing like the average high elo face at lobby. So this game was just kind of like an average game. The teams were kind of balanced, you know? Just, just your standard face it game. But at the very start, I go one and eight. And then after that, I end the game 14 and 19. So after having a really terrible start, I kind of just figured out something that worked for me and uh, played to my strengths and played to what I, you know, I like to do. Uh, I didn't tilt or get like too upset at things that were happening. Um, and I'm just gonna show you how I do that. And I kind of have a big announcement to make for you guys. I'm going to start opening up one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. And obviously these aren't gonna be very cheap. Um, I, I have to make it worth my time uh, in order to do these coaching sessions because they take a big block out of my day. So DM me on Twitter if you're interested in pricing and how that's gonna work. Um, and if you're really interested, just, you know, it's not gonna be like $10 or anything, but uh, we can talk about it in DM, so. Make sure to DM me on Twitter if you're interested. Before I get too far into the video, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. Are you tired of getting scammed by Valve cases? Booster.land is the new meta for opening cases. Founded by the guys who started GC.skins, a site with over 5 million users. So you know they're the real deal. Booster.land introduced Boosters, a new way to change the outcome of your cases to whatever you want. Your options are anything, like removing a skin from a case, doubling how many items you got from the same case for the same price, and the coolest one, best of three, where you can choose the best skin out of three from three different roles for the same price. Booster.land also introduces Bases, a new way to get free rewards for opening cases in a way that no other site does. Booster.land is giving you a free rare booster if you use my code BIRD. That's B-I-R-D, BIRD. You can deposit using all the payment methods you see here or by skins, whichever one you prefer. You'll get upgrades for however much you play, so everybody wins. Remember to use my code BIRD for a free rare booster on Booster.land. Thank you to Booster.land for sponsoring today's video. And I'm going to be very objective in this video since I did play very poorly in the beginning of the demo, like I said in the intro. Um, and so if you do a coaching session with me, this is I'm going to be talking uh, matter of factly in the same way about how you play. Um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll be pretty toxic to myself. I'm not going to be toxic to you, obviously, but, you know, uh, I like to poke fun on myself. That, that's just how it is. All right, let's get into this demo. And if there's any sound cues in the game that you missed because the audio being kind of scuffed, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to explain it. Okay, so pistol round, I see my teammate has nades. I'll try to pause it when oh, you can see it in the top, I guess. My teammate has a smoke and a flash, so I'm just playing backside. I'm not dying too early, um, you know, to try and... Uh, have him flash for me in back sight if the exec comes in at B. I'm hearing them at car and I'm calling that out to my teammates. And he decides to throw a smoke. I think he might've thrown it a little early. Um, there wasn't enough pressure to really warrant that smoke. That's kind of bad on my teammate, but uh, I have to play with what I'm dealt, so. But again, the plan still stays the same. He's gonna hold this flash for me. Um, and if they smoke CT and start running in, uh, he's gonna try to flash and probably come through the smoke or something. Uh, but my team loses A, so <laughs> unlucky for me, I guess. I'll fast forward through this because it's just like a clutch. Ah, I mean, I just stand no chance. I'm, I wasn't going to win that round anyway if, if I got that kill, you know? Okay, this is probably troll decision number one of this game. I try to play with mag seven uh, half wall. My idea is to like jump spot half wall, uh, but the other team is decent. They're throwing a molly that prevents me from doing this. So uh, and this guy comes up close. You know, in retrospect, I should have bought an XM because I probably would have killed that guy with the XM. Um, the mag seven is Honestly, kind of bad. I, I don't really know why I bought it. So, if I ever, if I ever, you know, play Inferno B again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make that play. But that just shows that the things that you choose to do in freeze time, um, you can look back on them while watching your own demos and realize that it might have not even been a great idea in the first place for you to do that. You know, maybe like just the change of guns would have been enough, you know, to have a successful round. When I watch my own demos, if, if there's like a pistol eco or something, I kind of just like fast forward through it. Um, like, I just called my team to, like, run down mid here. I mean, like, yeah, I could have been looking at alt mid, but we we just don't stand a chance when, like, we're trying to do a gamble play like this. It's pretty hard to win a round uh, with just USPs. You got you have to get really, really lucky. I don't know the exact percentages, but it's got to be in the single digits for winning those. Okay, so since I only had USP and nade on last round, I have enough money for full nades. Like I said, my CT guide in this video, if you haven't watched my CT guide, please check it out on Inferno. It's really important for the B players to have full nades because you, your options are limited if you don't pick full nades. So my teammate calls for me to smoke early and molly, so I'm just listening to what my teammate does. I just wanted to molly early, but 
As you can see, I'm smoking deep and then mollying close to prevent them from being like anywhere near us at the half wall. And then I want to fight with my teammate. He gets a kill and uh, he calls that he's falling back, so I fall back as well. My teammate calls that he has the car flash for me, so I'm just getting ready to peek in in case the T decided to come and take more control. I can't open the minimap. What a shit game. How do I open the minimap, man? Ah, there we go. So since we killed a guy earlier in banana, oh, this smoke is really annoying. Sorry about that. Since we killed a guy earlier in banana and we fell back, that means that the T has the space to walk in here and surprise us in car. And so my teammate's going to instant flash back for me B to try to catch a player doing this. And it, it's just a free round if we're able to do that. Because if the T is not expecting us to do this car play so early, it'll be effective. Usually what happens is the CTs get pushed off a of banana by the Ts and then the car flash comes in uh, to try to re-clear this space and push the Ts back into banana or try to like, you know, catch them off guard in places where they shouldn't be. But since this flash is coming in again on a timing that they might not expect, this is a good play. But unfortunately we don't get anything out of it. You can see I dropped my teammate, my flash, because I know that he's going to be able to support me better with the flash than I'm going to be able to use for myself. So that's a small detail, but playing an anchor position, you need to be thinking about those kind of things, uh, dropping nades to your team and such. And so they smoke CT, but my teammate just died at A, and um, my teammate still has a smoke, so and they haven't thrown any other nades, so it doesn't really seem like it's B, it just kind of seems like a fake smoke. You know, I think my teammate could have gone with rotating to A here, but it's his decision. It's not mine to make him. It's just a face-it game, so. Actually, do we win this round? I feel like we should win this round. Oh, no, they get 2v2 to A. That's right. I'll fast forward it here. I'm just trying to play in case the other team B pops since we're in a good crossfire at B. Um, there shouldn't be any way for us to lose if they come B. Or at least it'll be down to a 2v1 at the end, right? Like, my teammate might die, I'll trade him, and then it'll be a 2v1. But... Um, my team loses A, unlucky. This is honestly really impossible to retake here. Uh, for us, A is pretty hard to retake as there's like all these angles you have to think about, you know, like all, all these things in sight. Like it, you have to choose between that while the T's only have to worry about apps, short and long, right? So uh, it's much easier for the T's to play this than the CT's. And so this round is like, we have to get really lucky in order to win it. So that's another death from me. You know, if we're being completely honest, like I haven't actually made that many mistakes and this is something that'll happen uh, in a lot of games for you where your team is losing you the round. And obviously Counter-Strike is a team-based game and you can't rely solely on yourself in order to win. I know this firsthand. I've played so many matchmaking games where I have 40 kills and we still lose. Uh, you know, you, you can't do everything for your team. So you have to rely on them. Uh, for a lot. At this point in the game, I, I kind of thought to myself like, oh, I'm, I'm not getting any impact and uh, my A players are kind of fucking up and I know that I'm probably like more experienced than them, so I'm just going to swap with the pit player. Um, and so I just took another anchor position from him and uh, he just swapped with me to go to B. So I'm trying to do like a trick play here to try to catch the guy in boiler off. I, I remember this round, I whiff on this guy. He peeks like that, which I didn't expect. I, I, I think my pre-aim was bad. I can go back. So I should be playing this angle, I guess, slightly deeper from what I'm seeing because he... Oh, he doesn't even see me? Oh my god, what is this micro detail? <laughs> um, I guess I'm playing it right then and I, I should have just swung him. That's so interesting. But I get away and I'm trying to just go for like an accident here because it's like a full pistol eco. And I remember I whiff on this guy. I'm trying to like play, <laughs> I'm trying to play in this site. That round I got fraud checked a little bit, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, so you can see I'm very tilted and I buy the op. <laughs> um, again, you gotta do whatever you can in order to make something happen. There's like a crazy bird outside. What the fuck is happening, bro? I think the loudest bird I've ever heard. They probably got picked up on the mic. It's my cousin, bro. So what I called in this round was an app setup that I've seen a lot of pro teams run. It's where that opper holds this angle right here in apps, and then you have your rifler play and play the angle that I played with the pistol. And so you pre-scope here. Uh, you kind of just pray that the other team doesn't rush you. And then once you're on this line, uh, it's pretty free. Since if the T peaks you, I'm gonna go into free cam. I'd say we're already in the setup, right? I guess this guy just jumped in immediately, but since my teammate's walking, it's fine for, for him to walk and stand right here, right? 
So I'm holding this angle, and this is a very good fight for the opper because it, it's pretty hard to like justify pre-firing this as a T because you give away your position. Let's say like I'm not here, right? In a normal round, you kind of give away that you're taking apps. It, it gives away information, right? So no one's really gonna pre-fire this necessarily. So I'm able to get an easy shot off and run away. And then what'll normally happen is that the T will come here and try to like fight me as I'm running away. Both of them will try to fight me. And so this player will be able to get a free kill on this guy swinging or, uh, and, and still be able to like turn around and fight this person or swing into boiler here. So this is a very good setup. Okay, but we don't, I don't get any action here. My teammate, it looks like uh, my teammate spotted this guy. Oh, I can't. Sorry guys, the demo viewer is so scuffed. So yeah, similar thing happened where the T didn't spot the CT. Actually, that's such a that's such a good detail. If you if you guys didn't know, if you're further away from the angle, uh, let's say this is like a random corner, right? My field of view it gets obstructed by this to where like you. This is a shitty example because I'm just drawing it like this, but you might not be able to see this person while this guy looking at the corner here will be able to see this guy's shoulder, right? You can see this like little pixel angle, and so what happened here is that my teammate saw that little pixel, but this guy didn't. Uh, and that's another reason why these angles are so interesting for the uh, CTs. And yeah, my, my team is just getting all the kills. Uh, maybe this is why I'm 1-8. and eight. Yeah, and I'm just like hunting this guy. This, it's basic, guys. You don't have to play perfect every single time. Yeah, so I'm 0-5, and five, so I'm really hard smurfing this game. Okay, so I, I made a mistake here, in my opinion. I tried to play even more aggressive, even though I'm having kind of a poor performance. And although this is a solid play that I'm making here, Right? Because if, if you watch how I do this, I look down, the other team can't see me do this, even though they might hear me. I pre-scope, I'm banking on the fact that these guys didn't like rush at me, um, and I'm just posted on this angle deep to surprise him. And I need to see how I missed this shot. Yeah, I just, I missed. Yeah, that's gonna happen, guys. Honestly, that was just bad mechanics by me to, you know, miss that shot. And we kind of lost the round because of it. I think it's also a good time to mention that if you make a super aggressive play and it doesn't pan out in the way that you want it to, you might just lose the round straight up because of the, uh, the space that you give into the tees to do whatever they want with. And space and making space and, you know, taking space on, like, in map control are kind of words that are thrown around a lot. I want you to think about the word space Meaning in like the most literal term, like you have space to exist. So like if I pushed apps here, right? And I'm the sole person worrying about apps. That means my teammates are focused on this area of the map, right? They're not focused on apps because I'm the one who's responsible for it. If I die here, now all of this space on the map and all of this quote unquote map control is owned by the T's now. And so what that means is that unless my team wants to go back into uncharted territory, and re-fight for it, they're gonna have to worry about the entrances, like, like apps here, right? This this kind of sounds like really basic, but if you've ever been confused by the terms like space and map control, this is exactly what it means. It's, it's really not as complicated as it may seem uh, or out of reach as it may seem. And so yeah, sometimes if you make a really aggressive play, like I said before, you're gonna lose a lot of map control, map information. I um, mean, it's gonna be really hard to win the round for your team. My teammate clutches here. He gets really lucky to kill a guy in the last bullet. I called out that the op was an app, so he went and grabbed it. This is good for my teammate. You know, I might have got a new mic, but my upstairs neighbors are still fucking stomping. Leave a like if you remember me from the other video complaining about <laughs> my upstairs neighbors. Because okay, so I'm zero and six, so I I'm just trying to make anything happen, like moving around the map. Uh, and I, I decided, like, maybe I'll just go 3B in this round and try to see if they uh, get over aggressive. So my teammate warned me that they're, they might nade early, but I'm just gonna post on this super strong angle. And the reason I'm posting like this is because it's possible for the T's, like here's the wall, right? It's possible for the T's to jump up on the log with a little headshot angle like this. Uh, crap, it's like, it's gonna, it's gonna erase it every time. But like here's, here are the barrels, right? And they can jump up here. So you have the info to be able to like go for this headshot on this guy. Um, and if he like tries to peek you here, you can, you can flick up to here. And if he tries to peek from below, you can flick to here, right? So I'm kind of pre-aiming in like this general area to, you know, go for all of these shots. Um, this is kind of the best way to do it, in my opinion, uh, because it accounts for everything. And so there's nothing, so I just throw a molly uh, for my teammate and then leave. Honestly, I should have dropped my nades. I don't know. Okay, just update it. I don't know what's going on. And so my teammate dies down B, so now I'm responsible for holding B. 
And the information that I'm getting at B is that there's just like nothing here, right? So my team is free to play 3A. So this is good for me. It's just that, uh, you know, my team is dying. I actually saw that guy on, uh, without the x-ray, um, but it's very awkward. My teammate gets a kill and it doesn't seem like it's A immediately. I'm gonna fast forward here. And so I, I throw my smoke. I'm trying to like block B. Uh, because it, it kind of seems like they could be going back, but the T's made a good decision to just kind of like walk and chill. And this round is just like not winnable with the AWP. I should have picked up a rifle, but I didn't, I didn't see that guy on sight on my screen. So now I'm 0 and 7, so my first kill is coming, guys. Don't worry. Okay, look at the top of the screen. I'm clicking left click, and it's like going around these players. Like what? Valve, fix your game, bro. Okay, so I'm playing with rifle now, and I'm, I'm just trying to mimic the role of like the long haul player from Boiler to try to play with my teammate. And so I'm, I'm mollying apps. And then I nade alt mid to try to like, you know, do some chip damage on the other team. And then I'm just holding for like any dry contacts because my teammate's with me, so uh, he can swing if, um, you know, a flash comes in. This guy gets really over aggressive and just peeks me. And I mean, what can you do against that? But. You know, I expected a normal swing. I think it's not bad for me to refight there though, because you know, it's like early info and my team's already kind of rotating. They have all of B and uh, my teammates right behind me. So plus the other team is like not fighting properly. They're just kind of dry fighting. So I, I think it's fine for me to refight there, in my opinion. Okay, I'm playing with a rifle again. I guess I got tilted at the off or something. So now I'm playing from boiler again. I, I really don't want to play like in long haul. Um, Honestly, I should have thrown my nade here, but I got like really aggressive and wanted to fight this guy who was just like jumping at me every round. So um, that, that play could have lost my team the round. And so now since they took fast apps with that guy, I'm worried about another player being long haul because that guy wouldn't like psycho swing on his own if, uh, if somebody wasn't with him right in some other way. So I smoke long haul to try to like slow them down. And the reason I get this kill is because the re, okay. Let me back up. The reason people don't walk out apps, right, is because there's so many angles that the CTs can play in to hold apps from that the T is never gonna be able to clear all of them without like taking a risk and, and glossing over some angles, right? So people are never gonna walk out apps. But what that means is that sometimes if you're playing against people who are kind of psychotic and aren't don't really know what's going on, they'll just kind of do it anyways, like autopilot thinking that they can like get some crazy timing. But since I'm one step ahead of this guy, I'm holding apps because I'm thinking that he's gonna like be brain dead. And I'm, you know, it, it's gonna lose my team the round if I don't hold apps at this point. So uh, it's a free kill for me because again, he just stands no chance. Like how is he supposed to guess what angle I'm playing in? So now I'm like taking over the role as pit player in this game. And so yeah, I'm still holding the app smoke because like maybe people will try to come out again uh, while my team is like three mid. And uh, yeah, the round, the round just gets mopped because we have all of banana info. As I said, my CT guide, if you're able to get all this banana info, uh, it lets your team play four towards A and like stack uh, strong at A because you know that nothing is beyond this line, right? So it's gonna take them a long time to get into B site. Uh, so you can play like maybe two arches and one short, one holding apps or like four towards A site, you know? Okay, so we're on the board three and eight. So this round I call for my teammate to flash me alt mid. And this is a play I like to do when I know the other team has a bad buy. So if you look at their economy here, we won two rifle rounds, they won another round. So they're on double loss and then they win this round, they're on single loss. Then we win this round when they have to rebuy with two. And sorry, this is kind of complicated. I'm kind of saying it really fast, but basically I know that the other team is on eco uh, just from like mental math. So I'm assuming that they're not gonna buy a molly to molly off this area where I'm going to swing here. And I called for my teammate to flash and I whiff on this guy, that's very embarrassing. And I kill this guy. And I, yeah, he like jumped up Balk on me really fast. I didn't expect him to, uh, but this round is just over. I Frankly, I should have killed both of them, but you know, it's Counter-Strike, like it happens. It's just gonna happen to everybody. Like sometimes you just don't get the kills that you think that you uh, like locked in completely. Okay, I guess I'm tilted again and I buy the AWP. And I wanted to do the same setup again in apps, I remember now. And uh, my teammate is kind of deaf. Uh, he is supposed to like hear this guy running up. I like know that this guy's running and uh, yeah, he's crazy. And okay, that, that's a psycho play by me. But what I wanted to do is try to like, I, I knew I was too far ahead. I'll go back. 
I knew I was too far ahead in the long haul to run away, so my only, like, chance of getting a kill was not to run away and try to repost, it's to try to go, like, psycho mode and, and quick scope somebody. Um, because I'm so far up ahead at this point, I'm so committed. And so, I got really lucky that it worked out in the end. And a bonus thing is that I heard this guy spamming apps earlier, right? Like, you see it? So I know this guy's bridge, and uh, I just take that fight and kill that dude. And uh, this round is proof that I'm not a fraud, guys. And I should have killed that guy too, but whatever. This round is proof that I'm not a fraud, okay? I got fraud checked the entire first half, and now we're back. Okay, so T-side, personally, I like to play, like, the apps player. Um, and let my teammates decide how they want to play at B. Because my philosophy on Inferno is to give banana and retake it later. But a lot of people in face it, they like to just like run into banana uh, as soon as possible and fight as T-side. Which I don't think is very good. So I just leave it up to them. Like if they want to lose the game, then uh, that's that's their prerogative to lose the game. So I called to do this on pistol just to like run up mid. Uh, as you can see, I'm like jumping in backwards, you know, to try to distract that guy. You see that guy? Apps. I know the guy apps has no armor because he threw a nade, um, which at least it doesn't mean that he doesn't have armor. Like he could have gotten dropped the nade, but most likely somebody on a site doesn't have armor. So um, I'm calling that out. I thought he dropped a pit, but he stayed up and uh, yeah, it's just free for my team. It's not exactly free for my team. I think my teammate wins a clutch here. Yeah, he does. Good job team. Okay, so you see I'm not buying like AK no nades. I like to buy nades because it, it, it lets me play in a more dynamic way. Um, it, it gives me more options versus just dry fighting and hoping my teammates know pop flashes. So I like to buy nades. And this is the default molly on T side uh, for second mid. When I do my T side guide, I'll talk about these things and what each player is uh, assigned to do in a round. Since this is an anti-eco, and I'm alone, I don't want to go in apps because there's so many little angles in apps that the CTs can play uh, to like destroy you on accident. Like they play a really gambly uh, setup in apps. And if you're alone coming here and you take this fight and you lose, you're giving the other team a gun and a bunch of information because they're going to be searching for that like second player who's playing here somewhere. And when they don't find it, they're going to know that it's B. So their B teammates are going to get called out for that it's going to be B pretty soon. So when I was IGLing teams, I would always tell my teammates to have a buddy like when they're playing anti-eco and that's how I would talk about it when we uh we go over like t-side basics and like t-side defaults on anti-eco it's okay to not have a buddy but you have to be playing in the way that I'm playing here which is like very safe so I'm just holding for apps push and this prevents the other team from like going down mid at all and it, it lets my team be safe to go B I don't think that Gaby really like needs to be Mexi, but it, it wins us the round, so. And like, I can't believe this guy kills me like that, but <laughs> I mean, what you gonna do? My Mag 7 round, my Mag 7 round two, it does 70 damage. This guy through the window, he does 100 in the head. Like, okay, bro. And these guys have some awful view models, man. Okay, so here we go. So my teammate Molly's, and it's, I'll say this in my guide again when I do it, but it's best to break this window because of how deep the Molly goes and how deep it spreads, but you also throw this nade for if anybody's running through the uh, the molly, they're just going to die immediately. Okay, so I have mollied boiler and my teammate's jumping up apps. And this was like a... I think I went way too early on this, honestly. Uh, I should have waited for my teammate to jump up and be ready to trade me. Um, that's my mistake. Honestly, honestly, that's just me like not thinking um, and kind of autopiloting, which is a really bad habit of mine uh, in these pugs. Kind of like doing, uh, you know, just whatever and hoping it works. Um, it's not really the best way to win. Uh, later in the in the game, I, I stopped doing that, but this round, it kind of made me realize like, oh, I, I need to like focus because this game is pretty close. Dude, can I select myself, man? So I've never thrown this flash. I don't know what this flash is. She made it up. I went second mid because my teammates didn't really listen to what I was saying and they just decided to like rush B on their own. And uh, honestly, if we didn't win this eco, we probably would have lost the game, but I think we got really lucky to win this eco. Wait, do we win this? I think we lose this actually. No, we win this eco. I, I think my spot choice was in, insanely poor here. I, I kind of like, honestly, I haven't played that much of Inferno and it just dawned on me in this moment when he broke this nade in game that this CT smoke, if you're playing stuff like top first, you're kind of asking to just die to stuff like that. So what I should have done is grab the gun and headed straight for new box or triple. 
or uh, or dark here um, because these are much more impactful spots that you can play from versus like dying for nothing because I'm trying to like hunt for kills. So that was really poorly played on my part. And I know my team wins this. It's close, but my, my team wins. So, all right, let's keep going here. Okay, so I'm nading the molly again, like I said, uh, because if that guy crosses through the molly, he's gonna die. And so look, the other team is on low buy, so I call my teammate number one here on the minimap to uh, come with me apps. Uh, and honestly, like, like I died to this mag seven, but I kill that guy in apps. Typically when people are playing pushed apps like this, there's going to be another person somewhere in boiler. So if this guy's not killing me, I like instantly thought that this other person would be here and I was ready for it, which is why I was able to kill that guy. Uh, he wasn't really looking at me. So he was a stationary target on my screen and I was able to get kind of an easy kill on him. Uh, I died immediately after, but uh, the round is pretty good since my team is there to trade me. So, And again, that, that's also why you have the buddy system is to trade. Uh, your teammate is able to play it better behind you versus the entry, right? If you're the entry, you're not going to be able to account for things. But since you go in and gain info for your team, uh, he's going to be able to play it better behind you. I think this is a round where I kill a guy with the molly or something. Okay, I want you to watch this guy's perspective because this is how strong this play is. Watch, so he has like a pretty good spawn. He he just full holds W. My molly, it bounces off this uh, door here and goes even deeper, right? Because I broke the glass. And then this nade slows him down and look, he just is completely dead, right? And I think that this guy is like actually trolling for doing this when his team is 3B. Uh, because if we were to know that this guy was the only person at A, there could very easily be five people running up A and the other team just loses the round straight up. So we're pretty lucky to get another kill at B. So uh, I just leave with this flash behind me. Luckily, there's a smoke here, so I'm just able to like, run into sight. Actually, I think we lose this round. Okay, this was a really poor decision by me. So essentially in B retakes, you have to think that the CTs are going to be coming from all three of these positions, right? Banana, CT, and, and Coffin. And so you want to play angles where you're not just like taking a hard 1v1 to where you can't fall back or like unpeak if you die. So if you're going to be holding from Banana, you want to be holding in like a really cringe off angle um, or, or, you know, somewhere where it's hard for the CT to check you. So this cubby right here, uh, crouched in this cubby right here, maybe behind the car uh, and like jiggle peeking, right? You don't want to do what I did. And I realized how bad this mistake was when I dropped here. I was like, oh shit, there's probably a guy banana. And then, yeah, it, like he, he peeks me and it's CS2. Um, and you know, like it, he's gonna have the advantage uh, because it's CS2 and he's peeking. My teammate almost win the wins the clutch, but um, honestly, this round is lost because of me, uh, straight up. I, there's no other reason that we should ever lose that retake besides uh, me doing some dumb shit like that. So again, I'm breaking the glass because the nade and molly will go deeper. And this round, I wanted to contact out apps. I think that uh, like they're playing super aggro apps and um, you know, I just want to punish them. Okay, like I'm getting farmed by this guy. I, I don't think I did anything wrong here. I just think that like this guy's better with the mag seven than I am. Except now he's whiffing on my team, okay. This round is completely fucked because the entry like died and nobody went to trade him. He was kind of untradeable. I think my teammate should have ran at that guy apps, but uh, that's up to them. I can't really like yell at them to do that. So uh, this is an awful buy by my team, but it's whatever. Frankly, I'm getting naded with a Glock and I'm just like tilted that this is happening to me. Yeah, this is a bad buy by my team, but I'm pretty sure we win. I mean, we win the game, but I guess my teammate is taking things very serious and buying a shotgun. It's a classic NA face it. That Molly is landing perfectly, which is very good for us. Ah, so this is the round I wanted to contact out apps, actually. The other round, I don't know what the call was, but this one I wanted to, you know, do some kind of contact play. And yeah, the, the other guy just got way too aggressive. And uh, since we killed the apps player so early, uh, and we had another kill at B, uh, my teammate just like runs out apps here, which I think is actually a good play. I saw that this smoke popped in this certain way, so I knew that I could come up balcony like this. And uh, yeah, I kind of whiff on this dude, but I, I get the kill. I'm in like heavy advantage. I smoke moto. I, I note that I have a smoke and a Molotov, and this Molotov might have been excessive, but in CS2, you can just kind of pug this Moto smoke uh, after getting the entry, and the, the round is just completely won. Yeah, we don't lose this round. Go next. I think we lose this round in the after play. I think I played it poorly again. 
like I said in the beginning of the video, this is a game where I, like, I don't even think this is an average game of mine. I think this is like a very poor game of mine. I'm like making really bad choices and things, so. So I'm just holding this push. It's really awkward to hold this push if I'm not at bridge. Um, there's not really a good spot to hold it from. My teammate just like walks up mid and dies. Like this is the classic face it. Like what, what is he doing, you know? Um, but so since top mid is smoked, I know these guys are playing super aggro. I'm looking at the Balk peak and this guy just does it for me, you know? It, it gives me a free like way back into the round. So my teammate didn't expect him. He kind of complained in chat. I remember now that uh, the guy pushed into apps um, again. And uh, it is unlucky for my teammate, but what I'm trying to do here is see if this guy like tries to do like a triple like aggro thing uh, where, he, where he comes back into apps again, like thinking that we won't think that he's going to be there. So he stays. And then this round, I get an insane timing. So I clear everything. And then um, I'm just trying to like see if anybody's playing over aggressive. Um, and then I hear this guy rotate away. And I know that I have an insane timing. I heard that guy arch. And then, yeah, I'm just expecting someone to be like pit or, or something along those lines. And uh, it's a free entry. Here, I most definitely should have went pit. This is extremely bad by me. Because this spot is so terrible in, in uh, CS2. And I must have habits from CSGO that I haven't unlearned yet. Graveyard was like one of the strongest positions on uh, the retake, right? Because it was so hard to clear. But now, since you're so exposed to short when you're on the stairs, this angle is actually like not that great. Um, my teammate won a clutch earlier in the in the half because of like the other person playing graveyard. Um, so I most definitely should have just gone pit there. Like that that round's really bad by me. Or I should say that that retake was played really poorly by me. I think the rest of the round was played really well, except for that one moment. And you know, uh, in Counter Strike, you can you can do a hundred things right, do one thing wrong, and you lose the round. So and it's brutal. Okay, and so we're gonna win these next two rounds. But even though we lost that round, we still have a really good buy. You can see that our buy is actually better than the CTs, even though, you know, they're like winning most of the rounds. So we, we still have more than a chance to win this game. As you can see, I'm like throwing the same nades every single round in apps, or I'm, I'm trying to combo them with my teammate. I see him jumping up in apps, and I, I know that I want to play this a little bit better. Uh, I jiggle peek that. Kind of risky when my teammate's like not exactly ready for me. Like you can see on the radar when he's going to be ready for you, but um, my team is in all chat calling to group B, so that's that's our plan for this round. And so since we're low on nades, like I can see the nades here, uh, and it's a face it pug, right? We're probably not gonna have some like phase clan ass execute where, you know, like everything goes perfect and uh, like seven nades fly over at the same time. So what I, all I do is I just throw this like scuffed flash for my team. I'm not even like using a lineup, I'm just like throwing it. Um, and you'll see that uh, this guy gets full blinded. Yeah, they like stand no chance. My team should be wide swinging, but like whatever. And yeah, this this round is just completely won by us. Uh, because of that flash and that play, so. Little things like that can just win you the round for free, you know? Okay, but the round is technically not over yet. There's still room to lose. And what I'm saying to my team is that like, I'm trying to peek off of you, right? I'm trying to peek off of my teammate who's on top of uh, Dark here but I get mollied and I, I was saying that I'm probably gonna get mollied, so. And what I tried to do here is this molly was ticking me. I know that I'm gonna have to fight this guy and I'm probably dead anyways. So I'm trying to make him not look at me in, in this area, right? Uh, and look at something else and, and try to go for like a surprise kill on him. But uh, I whiffed, I mean, it is what it is. And being in these positions for my teammates, like it, it they can't lose, you know? Um, after the like initial peak comes in, so. I was really well done by my teammates. And I, I think that round was played uh, almost to perfection. Besides like, it, I could have uh, like saved my smoke for the molly. I actually did I have smoke for the molly. Am I just a fucking noob? No, I don't have a smoke. Okay, I'm not, I'm not on drugs. All right, last round here. So again, the other team has a really, really, really bad buy. You can, if you're not used to like reading the economy based on this graph here, um, it's a really important fundamental skill that anyone can learn. You don't need to aim train. You just need to play a lot of games and think about the economy until you get it right. What I'm noticing here is that they won two rounds. We won this round. They saved a gun, so they have to rebuy four guns, right? Then they went around with three alive, so they have to rebuy another three guns. And so what you want to think, like as a general rule is, if the other team has three, four or five players alive after winning a round, the other team is going to have enough money to like build up their bank. 
in, in, you know, their reserve cash that they're not exactly spending. But if they're living with two or one player alive, they're really like strapped for cash on CT side. Since we won this round and forced them to rebuy, they have to rebuy again on this round. And then all five of them have to rebuy on this round. Plus they have only single loss bonus. Their money is really bad here. What is this bug? Guys, what? Get this off my screen, man. So we drop the bomb and uh, yeah, I have to go get it. You know, classic. My team's already fighting towards A. And I just like looked at that angle because nobody was really holding it. So uh, I was trying to see if like a guy was pushing and I got lucky that he was. Um, and frankly, we get pretty lucky to win this round as they're stacked A, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, we're, I'm just showing the most like basic nades ever and the other team uh, can't really do anything as we're kind of packing them up in lane. And since that guy pushed apps at the start and died, uh, the round was completely chalked for them. So uh, I'm going to leave you guys off with this like half knife kill that I got almost, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, so that was this game. Uh, again, I was one in eight at the start of this game and I ended at 14 and 19, which doesn't sound that spectacular, but I was really down in the dumps, you know, um, Almost all the way in the first half, I was playing horribly, and then I ended playing pretty decently. Um, so it's just like a lesson for you guys that any game that you're playing and you're playing poorly in, you can always regain and come back within the same game. Uh, you know, like every little drop of effort matters uh, in these things. And yeah, I just want to remind you guys again that I am opening up coaching slots. Uh, make sure you DM me on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at onebird underscore D. That is my Twitter account. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for you guys in this video. Peace.